Hello, my name is Celia Hyodan. I'm the Chief Judge for the Lateral Inside Awards. We are quite excited to uh, be running the 30th Lateral Inside Awards and um, I am running this presentation for you as potential entrants. So um, just at the end of it, if you have any questions, uh, please let me know. There is an email address. What will we cover today? So we'll talk a little bit about uh, the Lateral Insight Awards, what we do, why we do it. Uh, we'll talk about who can enter. The, we'll talk about the categories. I'll provide you with some simple rules or suggestions in terms of uh, how you can stand out from the crowd um, and then some contact uh, details if you require um, any further information. So about the Lateral Insight Awards, this is our 30th Insight Awards. In the world of innovation um, and excellence, it's not a small feat. Uh, we are really very proud to say that we have been working very hard to promote the WA um, technology and digital space, uh, the industry, the profession, um, throughout this time, um, through recognising and promoting excellence in a very sustainable way. So we're looking forward to doing it for many more years to come. The uh, awards program will this year be run um, in two streams. Uh, so the first stream, and this is the one that we're currently focusing on, is where we recognise products, services, projects, uh, startups and student uh, entries. Um, and then this, in the second half of the year, we will run what we call the honorary awards. Uh, the honorary awards include the uh, Dr. Mel Bryce uh, WA Tech Company of the Year. It includes the WA PSE uh, Entrepreneur and the Achiever Award. Um, the awards program in terms of the, the entry process for the product categories also runs in two phases. The first phase is an online phase. So the first, you'll be completing your online submission. And there is a separate video that I've prepared to help you with the steps in terms of completing it. Um, and once you've completed that um, and you have submitted your entry, we will then um, do an online judging uh, phase where we will select the finalists. Once the finalists are made um, or announced, then we will go into a second phase. And that second phase is a virtual face-to-face -face, uh, presentation to another set of um, industry judges. Um, and we will then select out of that judging round who will be the winners and merit award winners. So the merit award, merit award winners and the award winners will go through as finalists to the I Awards. Um, and should you become a winner or a merit award winner at the I Awards, it will also provide you the opportunity to go through to a picture. Uh, just to note in terms of entering to the I Awards for Western Australian companies can only happen through uh, the Inside Awards. So um, if you have any questions in that regard, please touch base with me um, to make sure that you enter in the right um, uh, pathway. So there are some key dates. The most important one to focus on at this stage is actually the 9th of April, as that is the closing date for submissions. Once the, um, the submissions are closed, there's a period where we do some diligence to make sure that entries are complete. Um, to make sure the judges don't have any conflict of interest, uh, confidentiality, et cetera, get signed off. Uh, and then um, there is a, a round of online judging. Uh, the plan is to make the finalists known during the week of 17 to 24 May, um, and then give you some time to prepare for the second round of online uh, or virtual presentations, which is planned in the first period of June, around the 1st to the 12th of June. The, uh, the planning at this stage is to actually make a, a formal announcement through either a formal conference or a virtual uh, presentation session um, of the finalists and the winners. Um, and then uh, the next pathway is then through to the I Awards. Um, the I awards dates have not been finalised, so uh, we do keep in um, contact with them. And once we know better, we will also make those available to you. 
in uh, the second half of the year, basically September, October, and November is when we will be running the honorary awards. So you'll be provided with more information. Uh, what I would suggest that if you're still considering, you're not sure if you want to enter, join our mailing list because we will keep you up to date with changes and dates, etc. So as I said, the most important date to remember for right now is Friday the 9th of April um, and make sure that your entry is in by midnight. So who can enter? Um, anyone can enter um, for a product, a, a service, a project. Um, we have companies who enter, we've got startups that enter, government agency, industry, not-for-profits, students. So you can also enter, enter as, a, as an individual entry, so just your business or just your own project, um, or you can do joint submissions or do it as a team submission. Um, it's always good to actually just have a look. So these are the winners from uh, the previous year, the 29th um, uh, Inside Awards. Um, and so you can go and have a look. Our website has got a lot of information on um, the winners and, and why they won and what their products are. Uh, the Merit Award winners uh, details are also on the website. Um, and as you can see, in both of those, there are some quite uh, notable names in there and people who have also become uh, more known because of the fact that they took the opportunity to have their innovation showcased as part of this process. So just to run you through the categories. So we, for the first round or the first phase of uh, stream of, of this year, we have basically six um, categories. So we've got the undergraduates. And so with the undergraduates, um, that is not just limited to universities, but it includes colleges, it includes TAFEs. Uh, we have research and innovation, uh, which can be industry and postgraduate students. Uh, we look at startups, we look at social impact, transformative solutions, innovating uh, government. You can enter in more than one category. And often um, we would suggest that you do do it because it is different judges who sit on the different panels um, and therefore you'll get a different viewpoint. Um, in terms of the maximum number of entries, um, it is three per entrant. Um, in the how-to video, we also talk about it, but you can use, once you've done one entry, you can copy um, that particular entry as it will bring through the information that you compiled. You just need to make sure that those entries are specific to the requirements of the particular uh, category that you want to enter. Um, so with the Peter Fillory undergraduate student, as I said, it's the most outstanding ICT project for um, an undergraduate student or group of students um, in a higher learning institution, such as a college, a TAFE or a university. Um, Girton University uh, did quite well last year. Um, Dior Etherton um, was the winner and they also had a group of students who became the Merit Award winners. Um, postgraduate students enter in the research and innovation uh, category. The criteria that we look at for this category includes benefits realisation. So what, what is the benefit that your project is trying to achieve? What is the innovation? So why, why is it different? Why is it novel? Um, and what is the quality of the solution that you have come up with? With all of the categories, it can be a full scale or it can be a pilot, but it has to show, it has to have a level of a business case uh, to it. So it can't just be a concept, but it has to have some level of user acceptance of testing. So the same with um, the student projects. With the research and innovation, um, that is the early stages. It's a, it's a new product development. It's a new service development. Um, it's novel, new to market, and, and it's often um, also quite beneficial where we have collaboration where, between, say, universities and industry. Um, it also includes any projects done by uh, postgraduate students. So because uh, typically those students would be entering into the research and innovation pathway for the I Awards. Criteria again looks at benefits realisation, innovation and quality of solutions. So what you have to think about is why is your research and your innovation novel? Why, what is the benefits? What is the 
the, the what has the research shown and how did the research lead to the development of the product or the service, for instance. Startups, so with startups, it's, um, it's in that real startup phase. So what we look at is we look at companies that are in that first three years um, of, of startup phase and therefore uh, your company needs to be registered on or after the 1st of January 2018. Um, if your ABN was registered in uh, 2017, but you only started in 2018, we, can't, we cannot accept it because it's really in those first phases. The founders still have to play a key role and it shouldn't just be a subsidiary of a well-established parent company. So it should be a really startup. What we do look at for the criteria is we looked at, at um, areas such as what's your key resources. So how is the startup set up? Um, because what we want to see is we don't just want to see a good idea. We want to see a stay up as well. We want to see what's the impact. How do you disrupt the market? How do you change the way the world um, happens? Um, what is the business model? So um, how is it set up? Uh, what are the projections? Uh, and what's the finance? How is it uh, funded? How will you earn your revenue? What are those projections? And, and what is novel? What is the innovation uh, in your startup? Why is your startup um, innovative? Is it disruptive? Is it radical? Um, how does it stand out from the crowd? Social impact. Uh, and sorry, just with all of these categories, you'll see I've just uh, took a snapshot from our uh, website to show you who last year's winners and merit award winners were. So social impact is really about how do you change the world? Those social challenges, the pressing social challenges and injustices and, and inequalities that exist. How does the project, the uh, product or solution, how does your business um, challenge that? So. And what we look at these categories is we, we've made it relatively simple. Uh, what is the problem? So what exactly is the problem? Um, what is the solution? And how did the problem and the solution got together? And then what is the innovation and the excellence um, as a result of what you have come up? It's, it's um, for many companies or many uh, entrants, it's not just companies, people become, we become so, fixed in what we do that we can't actually articulate it well. So what we found by, by looking at um, this kind of criteria is we really take it back to saying, what is that problem? Where does it come through? Um, same with the transformative solutions. So in this case, we're actually looking at how we transform process, business, culture, customer experience. Um, what solutions do we bring in? This, this also looks at our areas such as um, the virtual reality, the artificial inte intelligence, automation. Um, there is a lot that can be done and that needs to be celebrated in terms of some of the solutions that business come uh, bring about. So again, we look at what the problem was, we look at the solution, how did the solution and the problem come together and what is innovative um, and sets you apart uh, from your competitors. Innovating government. So with governments, um, you know, we all know that every tax dollar has to work really, really hard. Um, so it's really about digital and technology solutions that will make governments more inclusive, innovating, how it provides better access, how it improves social inclusion. Uh, for instance, with COVID-19, it's a very good example where a lot of the world has become online, but it can also be socially exclusive um, and excluding. Um, so what's important to hear is that it has to be implemented either through a government agency on behalf of government agencies. So if you are an organ a not um, a non-government agency, you need to show that there is formal agreement or formal collaboration um, with respect with any of a government agency. As a government agency, it can be a local government, it can be um, a state government, it, um, it needs to be a WA based solution. Um, but it doesn't have to, um, if, if you're a non-government agent um, organization, you need to show the, um, the government agency and then submit it as a joint application. 
So again, the criteria is fairly simple. It's what's the problem? What's the solution? How did you match the problem and the solution? And why is it innovative and uh, excellent? Um, and how does it demonstrate excellence? So with respect to the categories, there's a lot more information for each of these categories on our website. Um, and there is also the showcase, not just only of the 29th Inside um, Award winners, but all of the past winners. Um, so there's some really interesting uh, winners that go back a long, long time. And it's good to see the, the, the sustainability of not only the awards, but the entrance to the awards. So when we look at um, entering the awards, it's still a competitive process and you have to think as to how you stand out, how you demonstrate um, innovation and excellence. So the, the next tips are fairly simple tips and they're not really rules, but we put them down as rules because they are simple things. So for a lot of people, when they come back and they say, what could I have done better? Um, a lot of the times, the simple answer is you did not actually address the criteria. The criteria have been set up with a particular purpose in mind um, so that we can assess all of the, all of the entrants um, in a consistent manner. But if you do not um, respond to the criteria or you do not provide enough information in the criteria, we cannot actually assess it properly. So as simple as it may, as it may sound, if you don't address the criteria, that makes it hard. So demonstrate how you stand out from the crowd. This is really important to remember. So we get so into the paperwork of submitting, you know, writing it that we actually forget to talk about who our competitors are. What is, what is currently in, in um, the market? How does this address the solution? Why is your solution better? Um, what always helps um, is to provide some clear proof and backup of claims made. So if you were to go and say, in um, there is, let's take any example, let's say in a particular um, demographic, there's X percentage of people that have suffered from social uh, exclusion as a result of COVID. Um, as a, you know, so much of this percentage has um, noted you know, what has gone wrong with them. So if you, if you come back and say, look, but also now we are with what we bring into market, we are actually tackling this part of the problem that actually makes it real. Um, if you also come and look at the things we use, look at the, the competitors, don't just say my competitors do not know what they do or the, the one that often happens is people say, I don't have competitors. Um, you may not have competitors, but there is a way how things are being done. So really look at being a bit more concrete. Um, and it's sometimes it's actually quite hard for people to come back um, and be able to think about the good that you do. What is the innovation and the excellence? And this is really what we're actually trying to also get you to think about. My recommendation would always be is to get someone else to review and give feedback on your submission. Uh, because when we, for instance, when we coach um, uh, the finalists for the I Awards, um, we often challenge people and say, but do you realise that this is it? Or have you thought about um, X? And all the judging panels will come and say, have you thought about? Or what do you do? So to get that feedback uh, from someone else will make sure that it's a bit of a sense and sensibility check. But it also makes sure that you really um, articulate and demonstrate your real uh, value proposition. Um, and then the simple one is uh, sometimes, you know, it's the first step in the process um, is to think about the title of your entry. Um, it is still a competitive process. There are more people than just you who enter. And so you always have to think about the first thing you do and the last thing that you do. So the first thing that you do do is you will put a title down for your entry. Think about what is the problem that you're solving and think about the solution. And if you can convert that into a title that is neat and remarkable and can be remembered, people will know what it is. So, um, if you follow these rules, you should be fine. You should be able to get through to becoming a finalist. Um, this year, we're also looking at doing a bit more coaching. Uh, we will have a separate coaching team and the, sep the coaching team will be separate from the judges team. Um, 
but what what for the first line that will only happen in 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 the later stages so um, I would recommend that you do have a look at uh, just following these simple steps. Um, and then if you need more information, there's a, there is a lot of information on the website. And what we've done uh, this year, and it makes it always easier, is if you send an email to events at insideawards.org.au, uh, there's a number of us who actually have access to it. So I myself uh, have some access to it. So we will respond to your emails um, and then touch base to make sure if we can't, you know, resolve it by email, um, I'll give you a call. So um, now, again, as I said, we're celebrating 30 years of Western Australian technology, um, innovation, excellence. We really want to propel um, our economy and, and show our caring for our community. We cannot do this uh, without you and without your submission. So. I look forward to seeing your submissions. Um, and um, if you have any questions, please feel free to touch base. But I would like to take the opportunity to say thank you for watching and wish you luck with your submission. Have a lovely day.